Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And Spanish police have busted a COVID passport forgery network with around 1,600 people involved, allegedly. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, a black market fake COVID passport scam network has been busted. 1,600 people allegedly involved, among them some semi-famous people here in Spain. As we can see here, COVID and PCR passport forgery ring busted. Omar Montes and the Queen of Coke among its clients. The National Police have arrested seven people in Madrid and Barcelona for participating in a Europe-wide scheme that falsified COVID-19 passports and PCR test results in a fraud in which up to 1,600 people were allegedly involved. According to police, six people have been arrested in Madrid and one in the province of Barcelona for the offences of forgery of documents and public health. According to the police, they had fraudulently registered 1,600 people in the National Vaccination Register. That means the passports are valid because they were supported from the inside even though they were not really vaccinated. Among those arrested is a nurse. So there we go, some big news yesterday with National Police busting a COVID passport forgery ring with Omar Montes and the Queen of Cocaine allegedly among its clientele. And if you've never heard of Omar Montes, don't worry, you're not missing much. Now we all know that Spain has had its fair share of corruption scandals in the past. And according to a recent survey, a lot of Spaniards still perceive corruption to be a problem here in Spain. As we can see in this headline, Spain falls two places in the corruption rankings, below Bhutan, Taiwan and Qatar. The level of perceived corruption in Spain has worsened, according to Transparency International, an NGO dedicated to measuring and disseminating information on the malpractices of governments and authorities. The country has dropped one point in two places in the global ranking of the Corruption Perceptions Index for 2021. It scored 61 points out of 100 compared to the previous year and ranks 34th among the 180 countries included in this global ranking and 14th among the 27 states of the European Union. The NGO considers that a difference of one point in one year is not statistically significant but reflects the fact that a level of corruption is still latent in Spain that affects the proper functioning of democratic institutions and that requires a call to action from public authorities, the private sector, and civil society. So the level of perceived corruption here in Spain has worsened according to that index and it affects the proper functioning of democratic institutions in this country. Now as we know, opposition parties here in Spain are questioning the way the government is distributing European aid money at the moment. But Brussels yesterday came out in support of the government for the way that they are managing this money. And as we can see in this headline, Brussels gives the Partido Popular a second slap for its campaign against the distribution of funds. The Partido Popular's campaign to sow doubts about the government's management of EU recovery funds ran up against the wall of the European Commission for the second time on Tuesday. In response to a question from Popular MEP Isabel Benjumea during a session in the European Parliament, both the Commissioner for the Economy, Paolo Gentilini, and the Vice President for the Economy, Baldes Dombrovskis, have closed ranks and replied that Spain to date has complied with the agreed objectives, which is why it became the only member state to obtain a first disbursement of 10 billion euros before the end of 2021. This decision was taken very quickly because the Spanish government had already executed many of the milestones Gentilini pointed out. So the European Commission is happy with the way that the Spanish government is managing those European funds and deciding not to listen to the complaints of the main opposition party, the Partido Popular. Now another Podemos politician, this time the controversial Pablo Echenique, has criticised the government for its involvement in the Ukraine crisis. In fact, yesterday he criticised Defence Minister Robles for using arguments similar to those of Aznar in the Azores in the Ukraine crisis. The spokesperson for Unidas Podemos in Congress, Pablo Echenique, has reproached the Minister of Defense, Margarita Robles, 
for using arguments typical of the former popular president, Jose Maria Aznar, in his opinion, by pointing out that in the Ukraine crisis, Spain cannot look the other way. With all due respect to Minister Robles, this same argument could have been given by Aznar in the Azores, Echenica wrote on Twitter, attaching information about Robles' words and referring to the former president's position on the Iraq war in 2003. Moreover, already last week, with the deployment of Spanish troops in Ukraine, the coalition partners clashed again, as Unidas Podemos was against this manoeuvre. So some harsh words there from Podemos spokesperson Pablo Echenique comparing the Defence Minister Margarita Robles to former President José María Aznar. And let's be honest, comparing anybody to Aznar is a fairly big insult. Now there's been an update on COVID-19 booster shots here in Spain, and the Public Health Commission now recommends postponing the booster dose to five months after you've had COVID. People who have had COVID will receive a booster dose against the infection five months after diagnosis. The Public Health Commission, where the autonomous regions and the Ministry of Health are represented, agreed on Tuesday to extend the period between the disease and the third dose, which in a previous document, had been set at four weeks after diagnosis. The decision was strongly questioned by virologists and immunologists who saw the interval between infection and the injection as too short and warned that it could even lead to problems in the immune system. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation here in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence rate is now sitting at 3,267. Hospital plant pressure is again very high at 15.5% and there are 19,314 COVID patients hospitalized around the country. An ICU pressure remains high at 23.3%, and there are 2,204 COVID patients in ICU. And again, daily deaths from COVID are high, with 382 deaths reported. Now, Spain's royal family are again making headlines, and again, it is for all the wrong reasons. As King Felipe of Spain's sister, Infanta Cristina, has split from her jailbird husband of 25 years after he was photographed hand in hand with another woman last week. Infanta Cristina of Spain has announced she and her husband, Iñaki Urdangarin, are splitting up days after he was caught with another woman. The couple shared the news today in a statement to Spain's state news agency, asking the public to respect their privacy and stating they would always be there to support their four children, Juan, 22, Pablo, 21, Miguel, 19, and Irene, 16. The news comes less than a week after disgraced businessman, Urdangarin, 54, was pictured holding hands with another woman, allegedly an unnamed co-worker at the Amath and Asociados law firm, in a photo published by the Spanish magazine Lecturas. So another separation rocking the foundations of the monarchy here in Spain. Former king Juan Carlos, as we know, has separated from his wife. The other infanta, Elena, is also separated. And with so many marital splits in this family, how long will King Felipe and Queen Letitia last? That's the question. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from James, we are in Malaga, asked for an appointment for the booster, and we are both going today. Yeah, James, thanks for the comment, and in relation to a comment that we saw the other day from somebody down there in Malaga, who said that she is having trouble getting her booster shot because her local medical center doesn't seem to have any. I said that here in Madrid there were no problems to get booster shots, and various people in different autonomous communities around the country said that in their local medical centers, there are also plenty of booster shots available. So not sure what's happening in that particular medical center that was mentioned the other day, but booster shots do seem to be readily available around the country. One here from Jared: Spain doesn't deserve British pounds while they treat the Brits like shite. And before you kick off, I have been here seven years, and trust me, they haven't made anything easy. Yeah, Jared, thanks for the comment, and sorry to see that you have so much animosity towards Spain. Not sure what Spain has done exactly, but you seem pretty peeved. So do us a favor, let us know exactly why you are upset, and we'll see if your complaints are reasonable or not. One here from Paolo, limitations to be eased in the Netherlands this coming week. Yeah, Paolo, thanks for the comment, and good to see that COVID restrictions in the Netherlands are going to be lifted next week. We saw the other day how various European countries are starting to lift restrictions that have been in place since Christmas in most cases. And here in Spain, some of the restrictions in the autonomous communities, for example, COVID passport use in places like Catalonia and Cantabria are also being lifted. However, the only rule that we have here in Spain at a national level, which is the mandatory wearing of face masks outdoors, hasn't been lifted. And I don't think there's any talk of lifting it anytime soon. 
but I could be wrong. One here from El Zorro, it's pretty shocking when you think prices of living overall are very expensive in cities like Madrid and Barcelona. I find very little difference in price compared to my city of residence, Melbourne, Australia. Virtually all of my cousins living in the Spanish capital earn a thousand euros a month or thereabouts. Same goes with virtually everyone I come across in Spain. Most people in Spain struggle to get to El Fin de Mes. Little wonder, Australia really is the lucky country, incredible wages, and we get paid on a weekly basis. España is fantastic for tourists. Yeah, Zorro, thanks for the comment, and if there's one thing that I can take away from having lived in Spain for more than 20 years, it is that Spain is a fantastic country for tourists, but not so great if you have to try to make ends meet, unfortunately. And when it comes to living in a city like Madrid or Barcelona on a thousand euros a month, your cousins and friends are not alone, as there are a lot of people in that situation. And to be honest, I don't know how people survive. So you're right, Australia can be considered a lucky country compared to Spain, especially when it comes to wages. One here from Brian. Hi Stuart, I noticed from your videos in your car that the houses look very similar to those in the UK with sloping roofs. Down where I live near Alicante, the houses have flat roofs with a solarium. Is this to do with your weather in Madrid? As I also noticed no orange trees on the paths as with down here. Also, I noticed your car is very quiet. Is it electric or a hybrid? Brian, La Marina, Alicante. Yeah, Brian, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, I have no idea why houses in this area have a slope roof and not a flat roof. I imagine it's got something to do with the weather in case it snows like it did last year. Probably better to have a slope roof than a flat one, but again, I'm not an expert on that. In Perth, where my parents live, you will also see a majority of houses with a slope roof, and it doesn't snow there. So that's where my doubts come from. And when it comes to orange trees lining the streets, I imagine that it is the cold weather that we get here in winter, the reason why there aren't any of those. And to answer your last question as to why my car seems so quiet, it's not because it's a hybrid or an electric car, it's a normal petrol car, but I edit the sound in post-production and remove all background noise. So that's why it seems so quiet. And finally, one here from David. 30 days until we arrive in Barcelona. Rain or sunshine, we can't wait. See you soon. Yeah, David, thanks for the comment and good to see that you are looking forward to your upcoming trip to Barcelona. And hopefully Barcelona turns on the weather for you and you're able to enjoy everything that that city has to offer. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.